The following is a special presentation of the National Lacrosse League. Division rivals Vancouver and San Diego take the field for a shootout. The Warriors' Mitch Jones is the league's leading scorer. The Seals are back to full strength at offense with the recent return of last season's Rookie of the Year, Austin Stotts. It's a battle of two evenly matched West Division rivals that urgently need a win, and face-off is just minutes away. It's a very important game in the NLL's West Division as the Vancouver Warriors visit San Diego to take on the Seals. Hello and welcome to our coverage on Fox 5 San Diego and BR Live alongside Doug Locker. My name is John Schaefer. And Doug, any conversation about the Warriors really starts and ends with the year that Mitch Jones is having. It really does. Mitch, Mitch Jones leads the National Lacrosse League in points with 61 assists, second in goals to Rob Hellier, who had a three-goal effort last night. So they got a big season for Mitch Jones. Here's Tabitha Lipkin with the star for the Warriors. Doing my duty. <laughs> for Vancouver, and I have to talk to you now. You have an interesting history. You actually played hockey at Northern Michigan, but here you are playing lacrosse. Why did you take this path? Uh, yeah, long story short, when I uh, was deciding where to go to college, um, if I continued to play hockey, I was able to go back in the summers and play Canadian lacrosse. So that kind of interested me to be able to be a two-sport athlete as long as I could. Um, and it's worked out, so I'm very happy with it. Now tell me about your best friend and roommate and fellow lefty, Logan Schuss, and what it's like to be playing with him out there. Yeah, Logan's great. We've known each other. We grew up playing minor lacrosse together. Um, we're looking for him to have a big game tonight and uh, get a win over here in San Diego. And you're very humble right now, but you lead the league in points and assists. What is it about this team that allows you to break away and be a leader out there on the field? I'm just trying to do my job. I mean, I'm carrying the ball a lot, taking a lot of shots. Um, we need our offense to kind of get it going for us and have a big game for us. And uh, I mean, yeah, just trying to do my job, really. Mitch, we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And guys, I'll send it back to you. All right, meanwhile for San Diego, what a rookie year for Connor Fields. What a year it's been so far, hasn't it? Yeah, leads in every category for rookie scoring. 14 goals, 20 assists, 34 points. Good for the number one spot in all those categories. Yeah, let's take a look at rookie leaders in the NLL at the midway point of this 2020 season. You mentioned the year that Fields has had. Here's a look at some of the other young stars. Yeah, and some, re some really special players this year in the NLL. This class is a very talented group fields at the top. San Diego and Vancouver for the only time in America's finest city during this regular season. We'll have it for you next right here on Fox 5 San Diego and BR Live. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. And now for tonight's inactive report, it's brought to you by BetMGM. Doug, what are we looking like tonight? Inactive for Vancouver, Brandon Goodwin and James Ray. And for the San Diego Seals, Connor Kiernan and Mark Glassini. Doug, let's take a look at tonight's goaltending matchup. Beginning with San Diego, Nick Damute will make the start for the Seals. And Damute's been fantastic for the Seals. 2-0 and as a starter, 2-1 and overall, 8-7-6 goals against average. Came in in relief last week for Frankie Shiliano. Only allowed one goal on 14 shots after he came in in relief. Meanwhile, for Vancouver, Eric Penny has been the primary starter this season. Yeah, Eric Penny, 3-6, and six, having a fantastic year. 10.91 goals against average but really what he's done recently has been the story super big efforts against uh, Rochester Buffalo uh, and a tough one with 37 saves against Toronto last week All right. 
All right, inside Pachanga Arena on this Saturday. Such an important game, Doug, for both of these sides. You look at those West Division standings. Each team could use it. It's no longer early in the 2020 season. No, we're at the we're at the turn in the NLL season, and and the NLL West is really a, a very tightly controlled race. Saskatchewan and Colorado at the top with five wins each, and then Calgary, Vancouver, and San Diego jostling for position. So Vancouver on the road. Remember the first time these two teams met? Really good game. Won by the Seals in Canada in overtime with Brody Merrill, who could be one of the stars here tonight for the Seals. Yeah, back in December, San Diego won a tough 11-10 overtime win on that Brody Merrill goal. Brody Merrill tonight trying to be the all-time league leader in loose balls. He needs eight to get the record, seven to tie to pass legendary Jim Veltman. Yeah, such an important stat, of course, within this league. The captain for the Seals. This is how it was finished off in Vancouver. It was a huge one. I mean, the Seals only have three wins this year. This was wonderful. Yeah, this was a, a monumental win for San Diego and really puts them in a position tonight to capture the tiebreaker. And tiebreakers are going to be so important this year as teams jostle for playoff positioning. A win today by San Diego. They'll take the season series. A win by Vancouver, that season series will shift to the deciding game in March at Rogers Arena. All right, Brandon Cleland in the center circle alongside Bob Snyder. We are underway from Pechanga in America's finest city. Seals in purple, Warriors in white. Second of three regular season meetings. Again, the Seals can win a season series, Doug, with a victory today, which is an important statistic, of course, in this league when it comes to tiebreakers. No, oh, it's super important. And I, and I think with the new, the new NLL playoff format, the top two teams in each division going, and then two wild card teams, you really want to take care of business in, the, in your own division. Yeah, it's gotten a little more difficult this year to make the postseason with the addition of two new clubs. Eight of the 13 will go this year. That bounce shot on Dave New, and he makes the easy save. You've been impressed by his play, Dave uh, I've been I've been super impressed by what he's been doing. And, it, you know, it, it speaks to the point where he's 2-0 and in games that he's started. And he's played very, very solidly in pretty much every game that he's he's appeared in. So the Warriors get it right back. Again, we'll keep our eye on Brody Merrill, but I think offensively for San Diego, Doug, we have to keep our eye on Austin Stotts, who's returned from the ACL. There's an opportunity in front with that backhand to try, and it's denied the shot from Riley Lowen. But Stotts is back. He scored just one goal, though, in his first two games. Right. This is his third game, first back at home at Pechanga. And, and he's got to work himself back into playing shape and just getting a flow, but certainly was impactful in the game in San Diego or the game in Las Vegas against Colorado. Yeah, this is his return to San Diego for the Seals because he has made two appearances. You mentioned the Las Vegas game, a San Diego win, but the Seals did not play well the last time they took the floor. First offensive possession. We've talked about counter fields already tonight. Fields has it. Whips it outside the restraining line. Berg on his way in. Good check in the middle of the floor, and there's a violation. And really some hot some hot players on both sides of the floor today. Joel McCready, seven goals in his last two games. He's a guy I'm watching just to see how that continues this afternoon. And then for San Diego, Jeremy Noble and Zach Greer have had hot hands of late. And you always have to keep your eye on Keegan Ball as well for the Warriors against the Seals. He's had some good games in his career against them. Here's Jones in trouble trying to get rid of it at the last moment. It does for Schuss, who fires from outside. Who's going to get the rebound? The Warriors do. It's low in, and he scores. A loose ball gives the Warriors the lead. Just a tough, tough break from a San Diego perspective. A little loose ball scrum. San Diego unable to come up with the loose ball. Low in there to pick it up and put it by Demute. You know, one of the issues for San Diego this year has been slower starts. Maybe not at New York or in Vegas, but here at home, they trail early, one to nothing. Yeah, just a tough break again. Three Seals players converging on the loose ball. Ball pops out low and right place, right time. Does what he should do, put it by Demute one-on-one. Warriors four and six on the season coming in. San Diego three and six, so potentially jockeying for position in the West Division standings. Should San Diego win, they would pass the Warriors today. So the goal comes just two minutes and 21 seconds in. Off the faceoff. That's going to be against San Diego back to Vancouver. Now we got an injured player down for the Warriors right now. 
That's the faceoff man, Bob Snyder. So an injured warrior on the floor as they took a take a look at that right leg. Let's take another look, Doug. Yeah, let's take a look here. I, th I think he. Ooh. Yeah, made contact with his own player, made contact with his leg. Well, he immediately clutched his knee. You hope maybe it was more the impact above the knee than the actual knee, but. No, Bob you, you Snyder in a, to see Yeah, that. Bob Snyder in a lot of pain down yep. there. Mallory, Mike Mallory coming in off the draw, really just unfortunately rolled right into uh, Bobby Snyder. Yeah, very little that can be done in that spot. So the question is, will we see Snyder again or not? All right, we do want to remind you, join the SEALs Saturday, March 7th at 7.30. They take on Rochester for Star Wars Wookiee of the Year night. Today only, text Star Wars to 619-375-3755 to get tickets for just 5 bucks. Again, Star Wars to 619-375-3755. Tickets are 5 bucks. Should be a great promotion out here at Pechanga Saturday, March 7th. And still a lot of concern down there, John, you know, with the condition of Bob Snyder. One, one of the things that we touched on in the open was the accomplishment that potentially Brody Merrill could, could have in today's game. He needs eight loose balls to reach 25-18 and be the all-time leader in National Lacrosse League loose balls, passing Jim Veltman. Mm -hmm. To me, the interesting thing in this whole story is that there's only three NLL players in the history of the league who have 2,000 or more, and it's a pretty impressive list. Brody Merrill, of course, in that group. Jim Veltman in that group. The third member of that of that uh, club would be John Tavares, the head coach of the Buffalo Bandits. Well, there is Snyder, who, from the looks of it, has suffered a fairly significant injury, unfortunately. So yeah, we'd be shocked, obviously, to see Snyder again in this game. As the head coaches look on in this one, Chris Gill. We just saw Patrick Merrill, the brother of Brody. And just a couple of minutes in. And the Warriors are leading, but they're without their faceoff man now in Snyder. So back underway here at Pachanga. Warriors in those road whites. Here's McCready, who's had the good play recently, shooting it wide. And out of bounds to San Diego. With a couple of face-off wins early on for Vancouver and a turnover or two, the Seals have only really had one offensive possession. Here's Stotts. Again, the star as a rookie firing in close on Penny, who makes the shoulder save. Pretty good look, though, from Stotts. Good look by Stotts. Good save by Penny. And I think it's important for Stotts to keep doing what he does well, which is shoot the ball. You know, he can't get away from that, even though he's probably a little frustrated by the fact that he's only got one goal. He just has to keep going to what, what has worked for him his entire career. In front, and a good save by Damude on Jordan McBride. Yeah, you think with, with someone like Stotts, listen, it's been time. It's just going to take some reps to get back comfortable. Absolutely. You figure he's been out of this for, you know, almost 10 months. Yeah. It's a and now time. working his way back into it. At this high of a level, of course, the highest level of lacrosse in the world. Ball still loose. Still 10 on the shot clock, though. Final seconds. One on four, and they score. It's Lowen for a second time. And the Seals' defense was pretty scrambly yeah. on that possession by Vancouver. Two, two guys converged on, on Lowen, who really just took a little sidearm ripper using... Graydon Bradley is a as a screen on Demude. Well, Lowen has scored two goals in the first three minutes and 40 seconds. And the Warriors off to the fast start at Pachanga this afternoon. Lowen from ball again. Lowen second of the day. Let's keep our eye on this again. They've lost their faceoff man. And now Keegan Bell taking faceoffs for Vancouver, and the Seals win this one. Seals looking for their first. There's a bouncing shot on Penny. It's still loose. 
There's Casey Jackson who took the shot. It's cleaned up by the Warriors defender, Tyler Codron. Ahead now for Chris O'Doherty. And these early possessions for San Diego so far have been a little concerning. It's been one shot, and then we've gone the other way. Vancouver's gotten multiple looks. There's a look in front that sails over the crossbar. See if the Seals can get more creative on offense here on this possession about five minutes in. Again, the second regular season meeting. It was a great one in Vancouver earlier this year. It needed Brody Maryland overtime for the Seals to clinch at 11-10. Seals have had good success over the year, over the two years against Vancouver as we get a whistle and a stoppage on a delayed penalty against the Warriors. Coming here at 10-17, so this could be a break for San Diego. Uh, this is exactly what you want if you're a San Diego Seals fan. Go to the, go to the power play with an opportunity to, to cut the lead in half. San Diego with a 50% success rate on the power play. Meanwhile, the Vancouver Warriors at 54.3% on the penalty kill. Where do you want to be on the power play? Like, what's a really, really good power well, play great, percentage? A, a great number would be 60 plus. 60 plus. But realistically, you want to be in the 50s, I think. That's where San Diego enters today. Stotts up high from that center point position. But this will stay with San Diego. Vancouver re-entering re the, the crease, crease after after getting possession. So a two-minute minor here. This will take us inside 10 minutes to play in the first. Seals trailing early 2-0. Stotts whips it in on Penny, and it's wider than that. Now maybe a potential break the other way. Now this will just be well positioned into the corner, and Vancouver's going to play keep away, I think. So the Warriors... Again, a man down for the next minute plus. We'll use a good portion of the 30 seconds as they start their try here inside 10. That just was crushed up against the boards on a double. Now we've got a violation, so San Diego's got it with a minute to go on the power play. See what they can do here, a man up. Looking for their first, Fields. Good quick passing here. Up high. Berg denied by Penny, who's been sound early for Vancouver. They can essentially kill it off here. Oh, but they went quick. A little bit of an adjustment there on that possession. They move Berg to the point, move Stotts back down to the uh, shooter position, or to the crease. Now low and now slow to get off. So San Diego hurries along, still five on four. By forcing the tempo there, turning it over, they've given San Diego one more chance here on the power play. In front, off the crossbar, off the post, excuse me. Real good look by Zach Greer, who got underneath the defender. Unfortunately for San Diego, the pipe made a great save. So that'll do it now for the power play. Uh, Doherty comes out of the box. These two teams are at even strength as they hurry along. Seals want to go quick anyway. Penny makes that high save. And Eric Penny sharp early today, John. Yeah, he has been. You talked about the fact that he's been good this year, as Dave Mute has as well. Cutter in front, denied by the Warriors. Loose ball cleaned up by Tyson Rowe. Good defense early from Vancouver. Good goaltending as well. Midway through this first period without a goal. Keegan Ball, sending it high for Schuss. A little up and under move here. Back for Schuss, and that gets through Demude. So Schuss extends the lead. Demude dug out a piece of it, but couldn't keep it out. Yeah, we'll see it on the replay. Demude actually makes the initial save, and then the ball just trickles between his legs across the goal line. Trying to sit on it, but it just squeaked through. There's a good overhead look. Yep, you know what? He kind of pushed that back in with his right, the back of his right leg. Seals have not lost one of his starts, right? 2-0 and in his two starts this year. 2-0 and in his two starts, 2-1 and overall. Logan Schuss with his 10th goal of the season in his eighth game. And the Warriors take the face off. So... Yeah, on this Saturday, on the road for Vancouver, looking to get to within a game of 500. This would be a huge road win for them and their quest for the postseason. 
Of course, the Seals could use this one as well, trying to avoid a 3-7 and seven start to 2020. Most of those games, again, without their star Austin Stotts, who's appearing in just his third game of the season here today. Look at that pass in front, and Vancouver with Jones has a four-goal first. Good east-west ball in. movement by Vancouver. And you'll see it here. Ball goes down low. Keegan Ball with the nice feed across the crease to Mitch Jones, who bags his 27th goal of the year. And we're going to see, it looks like a goaltending change. It looks like Frank Shiliano is going to come in. We'll look to see if that's going to be a permanent move or just an opportunity for Patrick Merrill to slow things down, make a quick adjustment. Doesn't it sometimes that you go to the bench and goalkeeper provides some amount of energy or booster? That's what you're hoping for. Absolutely. And plus it gives you a timeout without yeah. taking a timeout. Yeah. Dave Mew's got his helmet off, so this looks like it's going to be Frank Shiliano for a a little roll here. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I mean, he was—he could do nothing with that fourth goal. I don't know what Dan Mute could have done. I thought the third goal he probably could have done better on. So Vancouver, I mean, can you have a better start on the road than this? 4 nothing behind really good play from Penny. There's Shiliano makes the save, but second chance opportunity for the Warriors and a new shot clock, too. There's a cutter and ball. Ball in front. Shoots on Chiliano, but another second chance. Now the Seals win it back. I know we've talked a lot about loose balls today, but that was an extremely important loose ball for San Diego to come up with. Graydon Bradley with the loose ball. We always talk about it in this indoor game. Listen, no lead is safe, but at one point you, you want to stop the proverbial bleeding, right? I mean, four goals here, and you don't want to make it 5 nothing. Fields, look at this nifty move. And Penny got a piece of that. I think it surprised him that he got a piece of it. Played nearly 10 minutes. We're still looking for a stoppage, I believe, our under 10 stoppage. And we might go under five before we get a stoppage. We'll see. Here's Ball, drifting towards the net. Loose. Fought for the near side boards, and San Diego's got it. Campbell Lee. What do you need to see here on offense from San Diego? Well, I think you want to see multiple touches and you want to see the ball swing. A Greer, good move. He might have hit part of the post. Yeah, that was good look by Zach Greer. New shot clock. He's got screen there, Penny again in front of the shot from Berg. So we will dip inside five minutes in the first. It's been all Vancouver. Here in the early going, as O'Doherty gets rid of it, outside the restraining line for Mitch Jones. I mean, what an incredible year. Maybe the front runner at the halfway point for the MVP of the league. Shiliano saw that get through him, but wide of the net. A couple of saves for Shiliano, which is a good encouraging sign off the bench for San Diego. Well, I know, I know we've talked about this, John, on yeah. multiple broadcasts, but first quarters have not been, yes. been, been San Diego's friends. They come into tonight minus 10 and this this first quarter is certainly not going to help stops on a chance in front fields wins this back is one on two though yeah again it's a cause i mean there could be so much scoring but it's never good to start slow and i think that's what san diego has struggled with here this year Fields in the middle for Stotts, who was hit hard, but still got a shot off, and now it's slow to get up, Doug. And San Diego's got their first goal. It's Bird. Now Stotts appears to be all right. The Seals on the board inside five minutes to play in the first. And Stotts absolutely got blown Level. up. Yeah, going right to the middle of the floor, which is what he does. And then Wesley Berg, you see it right here, just gets blown up. Shots goes off the end boards. Berg with the rebound, able to blow it by Eric Penny. Did you see the way Stotts' head hit the floor? So, I mean, his head took a tough hit off the, it basically almost rebounded off the floor, the back of his head. So hopefully Stotts is all right. Big goal for Wesley Berg, his 15th of the season. 
And you answer now after four goals, so now you look for some positive momentum going into the end of the first quarter. Berg at 11 3 fields the assist. Yeah, we'll keep our eye on Stotts, who will shake it up at least for a moment. All right, time out on the floor. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on BR Live and Fox 5 San Diego. Watch all the action from around the National Lacrosse League this season on BR Live. Choose an annual, monthly, or per game pass. For more information, visit NLL.com slash BR Live. Ah, uh, yes, professional lacrosse here in San Diego where the Seals fell behind 4-0, Doug, but have scored to make it 4-1. They've got the ball here. Wesley Berg with a big answer to make it 4-1. And by the way, any concerns with Stotts, he's back on the floor and has it right now. Stotts dumping it off. That's Greer, back for Stodds. Quick passing, and off the boards, Vancouver has it with O'Doherty. And you know what, I know, John, that was a turnover, but I'm encouraged by the fact that they were looking to move the yep. ball east-west, try to get some things going, and that's what you need to do. All right, so again, San Diego on the board inside the final five minutes here in the first quarter. In this, uh, I call it pivotal game against Vancouver at the midway mark of this 2020 season. Ball off the boards, back for Schuss. Schuss, off angle shot. And this is gonna stay with Vancouver as we have another timeout on the floor. Stay with us, you're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on BR Live and Fox 5 San Diego. Join the Seals on Saturday, March 7th at 7.30. They take on the Rochester Nighthawks for Star Wars Rookie of the Year night. Get it? Today only text Star Wars to 619-375-3755 to get tickets for $5 against Star Wars. 619-375-3755. Should be a great night of professional across here at Pachanga Arena. All right, so a couple of TV timeouts. The Warriors with a fresh shot clock. See how they take advantage out of the media timeout, leading 4-1. John Schaefer, Doug Locker with you. This is Ball. Whips it for Jones. Jones loses stick. Ball still in, Seals have it. They've got numbers as they hurry ahead with holding. It's a two-on-one developing off the bench, and Penny the save, denying there Jeremy Noble. Just a great look by Jeremy Noble. Couldn't pat, get it past Eric Penny. Well executed two-on-one by San Diego, but they just couldn't convert. And uh, San Diego keeps it on that hard check again in the middle of the floor. Penny 11 saves in this first quarter. And so the energy kind of picking up in here. Late stages of the first quarter. There's been some hard hitting in this game. That was charred loose before Noble was able to get a shot off. But now four on three develops the other way for Vancouver. Shiliano has that go off the side of his uh, equipment there, and it will stay with the Warriors out of bounds. Shiliano just got a little bit of piece of that shot yep. by, by Matt Beers. Under two to play in the first. Giuliano, the high save. It's loose. This will be slowed up now by the Seals. And by McIntosh. Buchanan turning towards the net, firing high on Penny, who denies again. Now Berg in trouble, doubled. Does Berg still have it? No, the ball's on the floor. Still loose. They're going to play on. Sealed down behind the play. That's Berg. Vancouver has it. Now they'll slow it up. Five on five. We've had a very physical first quarter, Doug. Yeah, and Berg a little slow to get off the floor, being looked at on the bench by the San Diego training staff. Vancouver already without a faceoff man in this game due to an apparent knee injury as Ball sends that wide. Bob Snyder in the first couple of minutes of the game. Under a minute to play now in the first. Ball, using that scream. 
Sends it high. McCready. Shiliano makes the stop. McCready still has it, gets rid of it. Look at this passing. That ball denied. What a flip pass by Joel McCready. On his back, able to come up with the loose ball. I like the way the Warriors are moving the ball on offense. But Shiliano, since he's come on, has been perfect. Now, can the Seals get a late one? No, they turn it over. Now the Warriors can hold if they want. And will they use a timeout? They'll use a timeout, set up their six on five with 20 seconds left. Trying to maybe get that fifth first quarter goal and get a last, a last opportunity here against the Seals. Let's take a look at some of the hits we've seen in this first quarter, Doug. I mean, it has been as physical as a home game we've seen maybe in the history of the Seals franchise. It's been fast paced and it's been physical and and Vancouver likes to play a very physical game and there you see it on on Austin Stotts. Yeah. Matt Beers putting him to the carpet. There was where uh, Berg got shaken up. Yeah, great hustle play by Westberg though to try to keep the ball alive for San Diego. All right, so they'll go six on five as you said. But when you're six on five, you need to wait right very late, obviously, on this clock. Yeah, they'll take it down. They'll take it down to eight seconds, seven seconds before they get going. We saw a length of the four goals it's coming weeks ago, right? In Vegas. We saw Diego. it in Vegas. The aforementioned Brody Merrill. That's right. <laughs> Does a little bit of everything for San Diego. All right, waiting seconds of the first. Vancouver leading 4-1. Ball scores. Little east-west movement. You know, ball to Shuss, back to ball, and he finishes with 3.1 to give Vancouver a 5-1 first quarter lead. Off the side of Shiliano into the back of the net. I don't know if you could ask for a better first quarter than Vancouver. It's a pretty good one for them. Remember the first time these teams played, they scored 10 goals at home in the entire game. So ball at 14.57 from Schuss. And that will do it for the first quarter. So Vancouver leads 5-1. Plenty of lacrosse in front of us. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on BR Live at Fox 5 San Diego. If you love the NLL, you'll love all the highlights on our social channels. Get the best goals, saves, action during the games and during the week on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and NLL.com. John Schaefer, Doug Locker. Seals trailing the Warriors here at Pachanga 5-1. That fifth goal from Keegan Ball came with three seconds to play in the first quarter. Yeah, now if you're, now if you're San Diego, you're trying to, you know, just kind of chip back, get yes. back into it. We mentioned, we mentioned that San Diego had had a history of tough first quarters. Right. Vancouver has a history of bad second quarters, outscored by 13 in the second. So maybe this is an opportunity for, if you're a Seals fan, to get back into this. Yeah, and again, you don't have to do everything, obviously, in this quarter. But maybe you could get to the break, you know, within a goal or two. Who knows? I mean, 15 minutes to play before the break. All right, so Seals have it with Stotts, who fires off the post. That's happened twice in the first half. Good hustle play by Austin Stotts to get that reset. Now Noble has been playing some good lacrosse. Low shot from Stotts. Still loose. Buchanan's got it for the Seals. So maybe a better start here on offense to the second than what we saw in the first from San Diego. You want to take advantage of these resets playing against a tired defense. There's Berg. Berg! A shot high on Penny, who was able to keep it out. Real good save by Eric Penny. Eric Penny has been very calm in net today. Not flustered, keeping everything in front. Outside of the one goal from West Berg. Jones leads the league in points and assists and could lead the league in goals after today. Low shot on Chiliano. It was deflected. Ahead.
head for Eli Gobrecht. Now Noble. And San Diego coming off a game, Doug, in which they scored only seven goals. Low shot on Petty. And the Seals have their second tonight. Again, a little, little east-west movement gets that defense moving. So a goal in the second quarter, does that equal Girl Scout cookies? Casey Jackson with his eighth goal on the year to go along with seven assists. All right, so there's Tabitha Lipkin. There's with the grosses, including uh, young Quinn. I'm sorry. All right, so Quinn's excited for what's going on. I thought the player was going to come over there for the Girl Scout cookies. They're, they're still up for grabs, huh, Tabitha? <laughs> the whole quarter, they're up for grabs. All right, here we go. Let's we'll see if the Seals get another right here. Man, Stott smothered in the middle of the floor. It has been a tough afternoon for Austin Stott. Stott's getting absolutely beaten up in the middle, presumably on every possession. That's an eye up high. All right, Tabitha, you're on, uh, you're on floor in the seat. Tell us what's going on down there. Oh, yeah. All right. So the deal was the first seal, in order to score a goal in the second quarter, get some Girl Scout cookies. Now, we have a couple options down here. We've got samosas, and we've got Thin Mint, and Quinn is here. And Quinn, what is your favorite out of those two? Samoas. Why? <laughs> because um, I like chocolate because it's sweet. Now, how did you get this idea of making sure that one of the Seals players, they get some cookies if they score a goal? Um, I want them to score. You want them to, hey, they want to see you. Let's move the sign over. I'll hold the sign so everyone can see your beautiful face. And you just want them to score. Who's your favorite player? I actually have two favorites, um, Brody Merrill and Cam Holden. Why? Because they're really good at playing lacrosse. I have to agree with you. And I see your brother over here. He's ready to throw it. Now, her brother, Connor, you're going to throw it to him, right? Yeah. Now, are you going to let them pick, or are you going to pick for him? Uh, it kind of depends if they see the sign or not. If they just look at me and they don't come over, I'm just going to chuck it to them. All right, I like that game plan. Guys, what do you think about that? I love it. Who wants to eat? I want to eat. <laughs> and I like Samoas, too. Great job by Quinn and Carter. Down there, rooting on the Seals. They've got the first goal here in the second. Shiliano, by the way, who came on for Danude, has 12 saves in relief. He's done well. There's Jackson. Quickly gets rid of it. Berg back on the floor. Berg in front. Penny again, a high save. Warriors are able to get this out. Just about five minutes into the second quarter, Vancouver scored the first four. The Seals have scored two of the last three. Just an early goal. Jones has one as well. And then we saw Riley Lowe with the first two goals for the Warriors. Jones, Jones taking his time, picking his spot, and scoring. Mitch Jones was almost surgical on that goal kind of slips to the middle of the, near the middle of the floor waits for things to develop and then blasts it by Frank Shiliano using using two seals players as potential screens Graydon Bradley and Brody Merrill yeah like just well placed right like not the fastball just picking your spot and delivering for his second today. So the lead back to four, that equals the largest lead of the day for Vancouver. How many goals did he, did he need today coming in to get back to the lead? Uh, he, was, three? He, was, he was three behind. Okay, so three for a tie, four today to reclaim the lead in the league for the most goals scored. Vancouver using Owen Barker to take most of the draws at this point with Bob Snyder still out. And Snyder, that apparent lower body injury in the first quarter. Off the face-off, teammate ran into him. He was helped off the floor by his teammates. Noble 
Doesn't have much of an angle there. Noble whips it, cross floor. Penny again, a high save. In front, Berg. Now Berg behind the net. Finds the cutter and Penny in the right spot. Looked like that one may have been deflected before it got to Penny. Vancouver, as they hurry, may have a three on two. It looks like it's developing. Dive shot in front, and Chiliano keeps it out. We might have had a violation as well. Under 10 to play in the half. It's 6-2 Vancouver. You're watching the NLL Game of the Week on BR Live and Fox 5 San Diego. A reminder, join the Seals Saturday, March 7th at 7.30. They'll take on the Rochester Nighthawks for Star Wars Rookie of the Year night. Today, only text Star Wars to 619-375-3755. You'll get $5 tickets. Star Wars, 619-375-3755. Doug, you're a Star Wars guy, right? Love it. Big Star Wars fan. <laughs> all right. You've seen them all? Uh, most of them. Oh, yeah, I think I'm missing like half. But that's still alive. Here's Noble in front. Cutter and Penny gets a piece. Good uh, set play out of the uh, media timeout. Yeah, well, the offense, I think, has been better for San Diego in the second quarter. That's a good save from Chiliano. But the Seals just one goal in each of the first two quarters. Sykes had to hurry to get the ball over center before the eight second violation. Does a good job to, to accomplish that. And just fight his way through. Again, Austin Stotts appearing his third game with San Diego since coming back. Has scored just once in those three games, and they fired a shot very high. Berg and Stotts have both been banged up in this one as Buchanan shoots that bouncer from outside. Gets his own rebound. New shot clock. 50 footwork. From outside, that didn't get through. And that'll go to Vancouver. So just no solutions on offense right now for San Diego, Doug. No, they seem to be a little impatient, wanting to rely on the outside shot. They, and they're having success. They're getting great looks when they do move the ball, and they're a little bit more patient. So I'm sure that'll be covered over and over again when they get to the break. But uh, they really got to find some answers right now. And there's Logan Schuss with his second of the game. Schuss with two, Lowen with two, Jones with two. So they've been really balanced. It's tough to key on anyone. And the Warriors have their largest lead right now. And Logan just getting over the top. Big overhand bounce shot by Frank Shiliano. Again, well placed. So remember, Damute allowed four, Shiliano the last three, and now Damute back in. So we'll kind of ride that seesaw here, at least in the first half, back and forth. As, uh, again, a Vancouver team that doesn't score a ton and scored just 10 times against San Diego the first time these two teams met. They've got seven first half goals. Seals with Clellan shooting high. Merrill. Again, it could be a special day for Brody Merrill based on loose balls. Z five away. It's five away from tying the league's all-time loose ball mark for career. And the Seals have their third of the night to cut this thing to 7-3. A fantastic individual effort by Casey Jackson getting under his defender. Eric Penny looking towards the Vancouver bench. They want to see a replay. In his mind, he thinks Jackson was in the crease, and we'll take a look at it in a minute. But in the short term, real, real good effort by Casey Jackson. Again, one-on-one -on -one effort getting by Owen Barker. That should be a good goal. And it looks like a good goal, at least on first look. Oh, clearly a good goal. Yeah, no flag yeah. coming from Vancouver. Yeah, I think that'd be a waste of a flag if they threw it. So Casey Jackson gets on the board for San Diego. We've seen Jackson. Berg's got one. And the lead was five. Right now, 7-3 Vancouver. 
I think Patrick Merrill said earlier this week we're treating this thing like a playoff game. I mean, we need to find a way to win this game, hurdle above Vancouver in the West Division. We still have our season in front of us because without this game, Doug, it's not to say it'll be impossible. Of course it's not, but it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be uphill the rest of the way potentially. We're going to get a penalty on Vancouver. Looks like Mike Mallory with the penalty. Let's see if San Diego can rattle off consecutive. Right, you can't take steps. It wasn't trying to get it under the Hold on, hold on. It doesn't matter. So two minutes for holding. As again, Mike Mallory, as you said, goes off. That's a penalty that drives coaches crazy. They don't they, they hate seeing penalties in general, but they hate seeing penalties in the offensive zone. Well, again, penalties in this sport. I mean, teams cash in on you a ton as a result of penalties. Here's Berg. Oh, nice quick pass for Buchanan who shoots quickly on Penny, but Penny another save. Penny a strong first half for Vancouver. So the two-minute minor. San Diego did not score in their other power play opportunity today. Came in at 50%. Three different Warrior goal scorers have two goals today. They set up late in the shot clock and shoot there on Damute, who makes the save on the bounce shot. Merrill with another loose ball, four away from tying the all-time mark in this league. Brody watch. Party watch continues. It just has a, a knack for that loose ball, creating extra possessions. He's done it throughout his career. As good as they come, obviously. He's about to set the record. Here's good East West passing. Again, but through the stick of Noble up against the Dashers, where Buchanan runs it down, but not before a violation. So you'll see the difference for two clocks here, about 15 seconds. So San Diego hopefully will get another, albeit maybe a brief chance at the other end on the power play. Coming into this game, both teams have allowed seven shorthanded goals, and both teams have scored four shorthanded goals. Interesting. So the team's been hurt by shorthanded goals, both of them, right? Minus three in the shorthanded category. Just east-west. Doesn't get through loose and that would be a violation so here we go final seconds of the power play we'll see if they hurry this along or not they've got to be concerned of Mallory coming out coming of the out. penalty box yep. well what do they do here they shoot that's maybe off the crossbar here is Mallory out as Berg collects Berg in front with a dangerous pass it's loose behind the net still loose Clutching and grabbing for it, and Vancouver's got it with Mallory. The fire's ahead for Sam Clare. Clare with a dangerous, I don't know if he lost it or what, but now it's loose. And the Seals have forced a turnover, it looks like. Or have they? Oh, there's a hard, barreling hit in the corner. There's about five players hung up. As we reach immediate timeout, under five minutes to play in the first half. It's been physical. It's been fun. 7-3 Vancouver. As we go to a break, you're watching the NLL. Game of the week on BR Live at Fox 5 San Diego. Coming up on NLL at the half, Devin Caney sat down with Logan Shaw to learn more about a special relationship with his number one fan. Plus highlights and analysis of the first half and a look around the league. All coming up at the half. Final five of the first half, 7-3 Vancouver. John Schaefer, Doug Locker, good to have you alongside from Southern California tonight. There's Berg going underneath and Penny makes that look easy. We'll get an updated total at some point, but Penny, uh, again, has been very clean. Jones, a pair of goals. Schuss, who's known for a very long time, a pair of goals. And Riley Lowen as well. 
There's Schuss. Doesn't get through Schuss. Again, works his way inside for Jones, who gets leveled into the crease. Which will allow Vancouver to keep possession. San Diego's defense a little too lackadaisical there. Almost uh, cost him. So for Patty Tanky, 21 saves on 24 shots. So very, very sound. Purdy Merrill has inched to within three loose balls of tying the all-time mark in this league. And he's one of, as you said earlier, Doug, just three ever with more than 2,000 career loose balls. Jones. Best to rid it for Shaws, and now it's loose. It's still loose, and the Warriors come up with it. Cutter in front, and Danu the save. Just a big save one-on-one. -on -one. And then Belgrave at the end of the play got run over. But the seals have it. So Jordan McBride denied by Demude, who's back in. He started this game for San Diego, was relieved by Shiliano. Now Noble, trying to get underneath. And the seals strike with Casey Jackson. Seven four, back to back goals for the first time. Get Casey some Girl Scout cookies. Well, here you see it. Noble, little flip pass, back to Jackson. Overhand bomb beats Penny. Nice overhand shot, beats Penny. To bring the Seals within three. And Jackson had that first goal in the quarter. That's right. Didn't go get his cookies. And now he's got the second goal of the quarter. Doesn't get his cookies from young Quinn. Jackson from Noble and McIntosh, but the Seals have found some offensive rhythm in the second quarter. Remember, one goal in the first, three now in the second. They still trail 7-4. Can they draw closer before the break? Still have three minutes to do something. As they win the faceoff with Noble, there's a cutter. Fantastic look by Noble. Rear. Good quick passing here. Patty right into his body, and he scoops it up. Well, Patrick Merrill, who, by the way, is celebrating a birthday today. So happy birthday to Patrick. Could be a special day for his brother as well. But I think all both of them are concerned with is trying to find a way to win. Loose in front, scooped up by San Diego. Here's Bradley. Back towards the restraining line for Berg. We approach two minutes to play in the first. Burke still has it. Forced off his line. Finds someone in front of the backhanded try is kept out. Fantastic feed by Berg finding Connor Fields. And here's reverse transition the other way. Breakaway, Danube to save. Was that McCready? It was. So final handful of possessions now of the first half. The Seals with a goal here could draw to within two. Look at this back down and score! No ball! And now fight after the fact. Doherty and Greer. Well, before we talk about the penalty, whatever's going to come there, Fantastic job by Noble to back in his defender, get into a good shooting position, and beat Eric Penny to bring this to a two-goal game. Yeah, look at Noble right in front. And after the play, the pushing and the shoving, but the goal counts, and the Seals on a three-goal run are right back in it, Doug, at 7-5. Yeah, Noble, Noble against Lloyd just working his butt off to get to the get to a good shooting angle where he was able to beat Eric Penny and now we'll sort out these penalties. So Noble at 1336. Go break the assist. The Seals on a three goal run have drawn to within seven five. Do you think these will be offsetting? Dead ball foul. Yeah. Oh Doherty react or retaliates. We Hits can them. listen in. What are you saying about for chest? Yeah. yeah. So dead ball foul minors? Yeah. Okay. Do you want a mic? Yeah. 
Vancouver number two, San Diego number 88. Both minor penalties for dead ball contact. All right, so Greer and Beers go off for minors. Only in lacrosse and maybe hockey can that be a minor. If I do that in real life, I might end up in jail. <laughs> so we're going to stay five on five. For the final, what, uh, 84 seconds here of this first half. And how about this? All of a sudden, San Diego, which trailed by five at one point, back to within two in this crucial midseason game in the West between the Seals and the Warriors. All time, San Diego four and one against Vancouver including an earlier season win in Canada in overtime. And I've been super impressed with what Jeremy Noble's done since he's come to San Diego five goals a year ago in Colorado. Comes back and making an immediate impact with a fresh start in San Diego. And this Seals offense has looked much better in the second quarter. You can tell the players some energy and some momentum behind them right now. They're winning faceoffs. And since that injury, Bob Snyder's been out. Burn. Side of the net. Under eighth move. Cut off. That's Fields. We talked about the open. What a year he's had. In on Penny, who makes the save. We're under a minute to play now. A long outlet looped ahead, but with that, numbers will slow it up. Could be the final Vancouver possession of the half. Likely will be. The shot on David makes the easy save. What do we get? A whistle and a stoppage? Is there a timeout taken by the San Diego? Patrick took Barrow? a timeout. All right. Well, with still 33 seconds, Doug, he won't be able to pull his goalkeeper here, will he? With the shot clock well, at 26, he, he, can't do he that. will be. It's will he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then the shot clock at 26. I would right. think he would. So we talk about lacrosse being such a fantastic game of runs, and that's what makes it yep. such a fun sport. 5-1 at the end of one in favor of Vancouver. San Diego comes back in this quarter 4-2 with an opportunity to build on that. Absolutely. Fans want the best seats in the arena at unbeatable prices. Become a SEAL season ticket member and enjoy all the benefits of membership. Ticket starts just $9 per game. Save big on tickets, merchandise, and parking. Visit SEALSLAX.com. SEALSLAX.com to lock in your seats today. Uh, it is a phenomenal game. If you have never seen professional lacrosse in person, you need to make a point to do it. Uh, there is no sport with as much excitement and energy and physicality packed into one as the NLL, in my opinion. So San Diego is going to elect not to pull their goaltender. Yeah. With the, again, you got the well, seven-second differential. So Demude will stay in. Do you find this to be an important spot right here, like to get another, or are the Seals in good shape even at 7-5 heading to the break? Well, I think it's been a, a much better quarter for them so far. Obviously, yeah, you want more. You're, yeah, you're down two. You want to score. Yep. But uh, to your point, remember, you said to start the quarter, Vancouver has struggled in second quarters this year. That has held true again here today. And San Diego has struggled out of the onset of games, minus 10 in first quarters this year. They trailed after one today by three goals. So 7-5, we kind of wait this thing out, prevent an opportunity for Vancouver at the other end. And now begin the play with the shot clock at 7. Berg gets rid of it. Now this is off the back of a Warrior. That's going to be a violation now, guys. Final seconds. Yeah, the pass off the back of Ian Hawksby. Going to get a shot off. That's wide there from Jones, and that should do it for the first half. So a back and forth game has been very physical. San Diego fell behind by five, and now they've readied the ship and pulled to within two. 7-5 Vancouver over San Diego at the break is one of the storylines that continues for San Diego has been the goalkeeping play. Demude was in, Shiliano was in. Demude finished out the half for the Seals. who got a couple of goals there from Casey Jackson. And Vancouver has been very balanced as well in the first half. All right, let's go back down to Tabitha on field right now. Yeah, that's right. I'm here with uh, Coach Merrill. Now, Coach, better second half. What are you going to say, uh, better second quarter, what are you going to say to the guys at halftime? 
Yeah, obviously, I, I, I think we're riding a little bit mo of momentum to end that half. You know, we didn't we started slow, obviously. Uh, you know, so we just want to carry that energy over into the second half. You know, I think we're, uh, you know, I think the significance of the game is we're forcing things. And I think we have to settle in and trust ourselves, trust each other, stick to the process, right, and, and hope that the result works our way in the end. Thanks, Coach. Happy birthday. All right, again, Tabitha, we appreciate it. Vancouver leading San Diego 7-5. Halftime coverage after this break. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on BR Live at Fox 5 San Diego. All right, halftime here at Pachanga Arena, San Diego. Vancouver leading the Seals by a score of 7-5. to five. Now let's look at the first half stats presented by Bet MGM. And you look at the shots on goal. They've been relatively even. Loose balls and face-offs as well. The San Diego's done better on face-offs. Neither team has scored in the power play, but that's because Vancouver has not attempted a power play today. And San Diego today is 0 for 2. So again, Vancouver leading 7-5. Let's go back down to Tabitha. Now it's safe to say that Vancouver Warriors forward Logan Schuss has a lot of fans around the NLL, but none quite as loyal as his grandmother, or as she's known on Twitter, Granny Beast. Now Devin Caney sat down with Logan to talk about his number one fan. <laughs> You're supposed to say go. That's how I'm supposed to do it when you go. <laughs> I, I forget the words. Happy play. What's the word? Happy, happy day, lax. Oh, happy yeah. play, lax day. Happy play. Happy day, lax day. <laughs> it's happy play, lax day. When it comes to you know researching and prepping for these interviews, I always kind of find one thing that I um, associate with with the player and with you, uh, Granny. That's some like premium content. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's easy with her. It's. Uh, She's, I think she's turning 87 this year, so she's old, but she's young at heart. Got me all confused. Happy play last day. You know, she's, whenever I post pictures with her, or whenever I'm with her, she's always got to have her hair done and makeup done, and her outfits match everything. She's got all gold bracelets and earrings and uh, rings, and she's always looking fabulous. I'm a cream brulee beast. Sometimes I have to butter her up with a sushi date every now and then to get some pictures or some content, but uh, she's, uh, she's always says like, oh, I don't want any pictures, and then she'll be like posing and, and kind of <laughs> looking all cute. Fingers hurt. Yeah? yeah? Well, now your back's gonna hurt, because you just pulled landscaping duty. <laughs> I spend a lot of time with her, and you know, I, I talk to her all the time on the phone, and she only lives, you know, basically a couple minutes down the street from where my family grew up, so. It's very nice to have her around, and she's one of my you know, biggest supporters. And I can remember back when I was little, her and my grandpa would have to take me to one of my games if my parents would have my brother's games. And you know, I can always count to, to see her up in the stand, so it's, it's very nice. So does she go to your games? Every game. She's at every game, or even when we have away games, my mom always puts on like a big spread and has all the family, like 10, 12 people over. It's very funny because I always see pictures of if the game's tight or if it's getting down to like the, the very end of the game. She's She's got a blanket over her face, like kind of hiding because she can't, uh, oh my she's like gosh. nervous and she's, uh, yeah, she's just super funny. Oh, well, she provides great content. I yeah, think. she loves the camera. Yeah. She's she's always, uh, always game for a little camera time. <laughs> Such a special bond there. I know exactly what it's like. I was raised by my grandmother, so I know that they're there to spoil us and support us. Again, the Vancouver Warriors, they lead 7-5. to five. And in the fourth quarter, more Girl Scout cookies will be given out to SEALS players. We'll Test. Okay, there we go. All right, halftime here at Pachanga Arena. Vancouver leading San Diego 7-5. Some youngsters on the floor here. Uh, taking part in some halftime activities. Let's get to the first half highlights from this one. It started very fast for the Warriors. In fact, this goal, Doug, stretched their lead to 4-0 in the first. Real fast start by Vancouver, as you said, to pull ahead 4-0 early in the contest. But San Diego in the second trailed 5-1 when Casey Jackson got going. Casey Jackson cuts it to 5-2, first of his Hat trick goals, first That's half right. hat trick for Casey Jackson. Yeah, he's got three of them, so 5-2, but immediately Vancouver responded to make it 6-2. to two. 
it appeared as if everything was going the way of the Warriors. They would stretch their lead to 7-2, to two, but the Seals stretched their shot, uh, scratched and clawed their way back into this game. Yeah, and Jackson there, nice little feed from Noble. Brings it to 7-4, and then Jeremy Noble backing in here, really doing a great job getting to the middle of the floor and beating Eric Penny to take it to 7-5, where we are now. That's where we are right now. Now, behind this play, you saw that what they called a minor between Greer and Matt Beers. And uh, they both ended the first half in the penalty box with that minor penalty. But again, at the break, it's Vancouver 7, San Diego 5 in this critical West Division matchup. We'll take a timeout, come back with second half action. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on BR Live at Fox 5 San Diego. The NLL on BR Live is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit GEICO.com to see how much you could save. Next weekend, the Toronto Rock head to Sastel Center to take on the rush. In an Alterna Cup matchup, catch the action on BR Live starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Get Toronto and Saskatchewan. John Schaefer, Doug Locker back with you here. In San Diego, where Patrick Merrill and the Seals find themselves trailing 7-5, although at one point they trailed by five goals. So some momentum potentially for the Seals heading into the break and now back out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And before we get this half going, I want to give a, a shout-out to uh, Grandma Shuss. I know yes. they're watching the game. Really Logan, cool Logan, there, Logan, Logan with two goals and one assist at the break. But no, this is a, obviously a critical half as far as Western Division standings go. And San Diego finished that first half with a three-goal run of their own to really close the gap to two. And now it'll be important to see if they can kind of carry that momentum. You heard Patrick Merrill right before halftime talking about the bad start and how they gained a little bit more momentum, kind of got back into that kind of intense playoff atmosphere mindset that I know he wanted to promote going into this game. So now we'll see if it carries over into the last last 30 minutes. Remember, Brody Merrill needed eight loose balls to match the all-time loose ball record in the NLL. The official stats have him at three through 30 minutes, which means he would still be five shy from tying if I'm doing my math properly. So against San Diego, trailing 7-5 as we get this second half underway. Bobby, Sna Bobby Snyder still yeah. not back from his injury in the first quarter. Sam Clare taking this face off against Brandon Clellan. Which, by the way, I think is a significant factor because San Diego in the first half won 8 of 13 faceoffs. A very good mark for Clellan. See if he can keep that going here in the second half. And here we go. In that center circle. Underway. And the Seals win it. So 9 of 14 right now for San Diego. Very good mark. Remember that first quarter did not go well for San Diego. They fell behind 4 0. And they've scored four of their five goals today, actually, in the second quarter. Three of those coming from this man. Jackson's got four. And you're seeing a little taste of why Casey Jackson led this franchise last year in the goal category. His fourth goal of the day beats Eric Penny up high right off the first face off of the second half. Yeah, Penny never even reacted to it. He was beat top shelf. So Jackson completely feeling it with his fourth against since the start of the second quarter. It comes 26 seconds in to the second half. Connor Fields give him an assist. And San Diego has nearly climbed all the way back. They trailed by five. They're within one. And the Seals are winning every faceoff right now, Doug. 10 of 15. Cleland doing an excellent job at the draw. Such an important difference when you're trying to win a close game. I mean, if you win 70% of faceoffs, you get all those extra possessions. Fields. Fields oh, dumps it off in front. That goes all the way back for Bird. This is for a tie kept down. Jackson looking for a handful. 
Brand new shot clock for San Diego. Jackson ties the score. What a night for Casey Jackson. And Casey Jackson doing a, a fantastic job of mixing up his shots. That one low to low beats Penny. You'll see right here, right at the feet. Just a worm burner. And we're tied at seven on Casey Jackson's fifth goal of the day. It feels a little bit like we've played two games today. The game that Vancouver dominated early and the game at San Diego is dominating now. Well, and now we're on a five goal run by the Seals carrying over from the end of the second quarter. Five goals on six shots, not bad for Casey Jackson. We'll take that percentage any day of the week. So again, the Seals winning every single faceoff essentially here today and now a chance to go out in front for the first time as they have taken control of this game to get even can they continue with the momentum penny has now been beat again by buchanan now and the seals lead well no better no better time for kyle buchanan to step up and score a goal an 8-7 seals lead Bounce shot beats Eric Penny. And Kyle Buchanan, with his seventh goal of the year, gives the Seals their first lead of the game. Well, you said earlier lacrosse is a game of runs, but this is now a six-goal run for San Diego. And the Seals hope it never ends. And as the Warriors have been pushed to a deficit for the first time today. And as good as Kyle Buchanan has been in his career, and certainly with San Diego, he's only had one multi-goal game this year. So I think, you know, they're looking for that breakout game by Kyle Buchanan, and we all know it could come at any time. How about four for four on second half faceoffs for San Diego? Three goals, Doug, in less than two minutes of game action. In fact, in about 90 seconds of game action, and the 6-0 run has San Diego in front for the first time. What? A Ron Field shoots it wide. And that will be actually a violation on the shot clock. On the restart, Vancouver wants to go quickly here. But they might lose possession as a result they do. Yeah, Noble started to try to go off the floor, and then he realized, oh, I better get back yep. on and play defense. And actually ended up coming with the uh, cause turnover to get the Seals the ball back. What a start to the second half for San Diego. In fact, Vancouver has not had possession, right, other than right there where they turned it over on offense yet. There's going to be a penalty. It's kept alive by Greer, but Penny makes the high save. And we'll get the delayed penalty. So San Diego in complete control, leading 8-7 on a six-goal run, and they'll play a man up here. And Bird just taken to the ground, ridden like, ridden like a show pony, taken to the ground in front of the net by Ian Hawksby. Haven't gone anywhere! That'll put, that'll put San Diego on the power play with an opportunity to go up by two. San Diego today on the power play is 0 for 2. Well, it's really been, like I said, really two games right now for the Warriors, who led 7-2 on the road, but now find themselves up against the rope, so to speak, having allowed six straight. Jackson, could he do it again? Not just wide off the pads there. Jackson, a hat trick in the first half, two goals here in the second half. Stott still looking for his first in San Diego since returning. It's off the back of the net to Vancouver. Furious start to the second half. Two teams combined for just 21 goals the first time they met, and that went to overtime. We might see that by the end of the third today. We're at 15 already. First offensive set for Vancouver here in the second half. One on two, easy save for Dave Mute on ball. Yeah, it was a good job by the Seals defense. They had two guys on uh, Keegan Ball, the Mute saw it all the way in. So you look at that power play time, still plenty of time for San Diego. Stotts. Or Jackson, trying to go behind the back there. It's cleaned up by Fields, back for Jackson. East-West for Stotts, kept out by Penny. 
And it will stay with San Diego. And the new shot clock, too. So another chance here on the power play. Jackson ooh, slings one. Look at this back and forth passing. Five passes and stops as his first in San Diego in his second season with the Seals. Wow, there's a clinic in ball movement for you, John. East-West, three different times, opens up the shot by Stotts. Just a blaster five hole by Austin Stotts to give San Diego a two goal lead, a power play marker. So a seven goal run. Stotts, remember the goal came in Vegas. This is his first game back in San Diego since the injury. The Warriors, look at that, have not scored in how many minutes is that? That's essentially a quarter since the last time they scored. As it was the 647 mark of the second quarter to now the, what, 10 minute mark of the third quarter. Seven goals in 12 minutes and 24 seconds. Stotts on the power play from Noble, the first power play goal of the night for the Seals. So the Warriors completely on their heels right now, and San Diego is taking control with a dominant performance from Casey Jackson tonight. In front. Jackson gets it back. Gets rid of it. And he might have been screened, but is able to make that save a much needed save for Vancouver. So 9 7. Seven straight. For San Diego. Here's a chance to get closer for the Warriors, but Dan Newt, a nice save right in front there as Stuart McBride was stopped. Brody Merrill, did he pick up a loose ball there? Yep, we're Brody Watch for two for the tie. Okay, two loose balls away from tying it up for Brody Merrill. Stotts again there at an angle. Stotts still fighting for it, he's in the crease, I believe. Warriors have it. Stotts is another guy that seemingly at any moment could break out for four or five goals. Like he's he's just that dynamic. He actually came up with that loose ball right at the right at the goal mount. Uh, it kind of feels like he's already due for that. I know it's just his third game and sixth half since returning, but he's got that goal. Maybe he gets a couple of more here in the second half. Jones looking for Riley Lowen and that would have been a shot clock violation of that for the turnover. Drew Belgrave with a great defensive effort there to cause that turnover. Seals defense has been perfect in the second half. A lot of intensity so far in the second half for San Diego. Seals by a pair. Fields gets it back. Yeah, four Consecutive to start the second half, but 7 nothing run here since they trailed 7-2. And Penny makes the save there. Not much of an angle to work with for uh, Buchanan. Penny, Penny really doing a good job just to hug his pipe, making sure nothing slid by him. Now the Warriors want to go quickly the other way into the offensive zone. Bounce pass for Schuss. Lowen comes on. There's some good passing now from Vancouver. Ball fakes it and is denied. Final seconds will they get a shot off? They do, and Damute has that go off his stick. Now it feels completely different right now to the way this game started. A little two on one game with Stotts and Freddy's got another. On cue. 10-7. Jackson with a little flip pass to Austin Stotts. Dancing right around the crease line. I'm sure that Chris Gill and his staff will be looking pretty closely at this. Hmm. Can't really see it there on that camera angle. Oh, that's... <laughs> we might need an overhead of that one. Very close. If it stands, it's his second. I think it'll stand. That's a great look. 
Just a fantastic goal, yeah, yeah by Austin Stotts. But even a better feed by Casey Jackson, who's showing the ability to really do it all today for the Seals. And the Seals again, Doug. I mean, this is a, a massive story. They're winning all these faceoffs. Vancouver's had very limited second half possessions as San Diego scored five times. I don't know how often you see an eight goal run in this league, but that's what San Diego has right now. Looking for more fields underneath, scores! Now the wave it off, he was in the crease. They will wave it off. And now behind the play, Jeremy Noble shaking up for San Diego back to his feet. But they quickly waved it off. Let's see why. Now he's out of the crease. That's going to be a good goal, and Patrick Merrill throws the flag as soon as he gets the replay. I think it's going to be pretty easy to see that, too. Yeah, the overhead really shows it right here. It looks like Connor Fields keeps his feet out of the crease and bounces it by Eric Penny. Connor Fields adding to his rookie totals. We'll have a great opportunity to listen to the officials as they work through the replay. But I think this is going to be a good goal. Patrick Merrill all smiles right now. San Diego has completely turned this game on its head. So they're going to take a look at this, and it should be a good goal. Which would be, what, nine consecutive goals? Sorry, Chico, that's my fault, buddy. That's my fault. That's a good goal. Oh, you just heard him say that. That was easy. After video review, the original call on the field is confirmed. We have a good goal. All right, Fields gives San Diego two goals in 25 seconds. Let's go to Tabitha. She's with Coach Sanderson right now. Coach Sanderson, how do you feel about this run the team's making? Well, obviously, we started the third better than the first, so we'll take it. Definitely the vibe has certainly changed. What was said at halftime? Well, we're playing for our lives right now. Both teams are, so we, got to, we had to come out and you know, throw that first punch, and luckily we have. Thank you, Coach. Guys? All right, Tabitha, thank you. 11-7 on a nine-goal run. Doug, I don't know if we've said it that exact same way, but you could make an argument that it was coming in a must-win spot for San Diego, and now they've taken control of this game. Yeah, and I, w I was using words like pivotal, yeah. critical, yeah. whatever the word you want to say. But, but you just heard on the floor, they're treating this like a playoff game. Let's go to a break. 11-7. It's all seals right now. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on BR Live and Fox 5 San Diego. Remember to join the Seals Saturday, March 7th at 7.30. We'll take on the Rochester Nighthawks for Star Wars Rookie of the Year night. Today, only text Star Wars to 619-375-3755 to get tickets for $5. Star Wars to 619-375-3755. All Seals right now, nine consecutive goals. Casey Jackson, five tonight. Seals with possession, good idea there. Finds its way through. Buchanan collects. Back for Noble. Now Fields. Fields low to low. Sails wide of the net. Can they keep it in the zone? Well, it doesn't matter on the violation. So now if you're Vancouver, you're just trying to figure out a way to stop the run, right? Right. Well, they haven't scored, Doug, in 15 minutes of game plot. And in those 15 minutes, the Seals have scored nine times. It was a 7-2 Vancouver lead, seemingly forever ago. This East-West passing, but Daniel, who was beaten early, has not been beaten late. Belgrave accelerates and halts. And now Merrill is one away from tying the career mark for most loose balls in NLL history. How about that? Here's Jackson with the big night. Pass denied. He cleans up and loses it again. And Jackson was trying to get the ball really to a, a wide open Austin Stotts right in front of the net. Couldn't do it. Now, the Warriors, you would think, would need the next goal. I mean, they've allowed nine straight. They trail by four. If they allow another, I mean, a double-digit goal run. Lowen. 
McCready from all the way outside. Demute again. Now Holding comes up with it. Now the defense, the goaltending, and this offensive explosion have combined for San Diego to take this four-goal lead. Fields. Seals is playing with some confidence right now in offense. You can feel it as Berg has that one halted. Final seconds here to the shot clock. Berg in front scores! Ten consecutive goals. Little two-man game. Wesley Berg, the recipient. Take a look at it here. Buchanan, little pass to Westberg, just cutting right down the middle of the floor. Really nothing Eric Penny could do on that one. Doug, you've been around this game a long time, right? I have. How often do you see 10 consecutive goals? Not often. Not often. I like that breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Buchanan give him an assist. Now, what are they looking at? This wasn't a shot clock violation, was it? Yeah, I don't know. Let's listen in. Uh, there's the shot clock. No, it's not a violation. Great look from our crew here on BR Live and Fox 5. This should be a very quick review unless they're looking at some for something else, but. Okay, give me a wide shot now, please. Give me a wide shot. And you can hear Todd LeBranch, the crew chief. So again, we've yeah, talked right about yeah. the offense. Yeah, okay, so so yeah, right from here. We're no, listening in right now, aren't we? <laughs> okay, just let it roll from here. We're gonna go right over his shoulder here. Yeah. Take a look. <laughs> that's a great shot okay, right that's there. That's all I need. Thank you very much. No, no go, no go, no go. Oops, sorry. So they're going to wave this off, but Doug, Doug, what's what's the reason? We'll find out maybe. Okay, guys. After review, San Diego number 14 cuts through the crease, is the first to receive a pass, therefore we have no goal. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. That at least it's not the shot clock, though. No, there that's, there that's he is, yep. yep, there he is in the crease. Doug, what about this rule, though? I mean, that's so And he's the first far. to touch. But, is it relevant? Is, that's my question. As in, when you're the first to touch seven seconds after you've been through the crease, does it, can't is do it impactful? Can't, can't do it, John. Okay, can't do it. 447 to play. We'll take a timeout. 11 7 San Diego leads. You're watching the National Lacrosse League. Game of the week on BR Live in Fox 5 San Diego. Next weekend, the NLL Game of the Week moves to Buffalo as Josh Byrne and the Bandits welcome Stephen Keogh and the Thunderbirds to the Key Bank Center. Catch all the action on BR Live, Twitter, and Facebook starting at 7 p.m. Speaking of next week, San Diego, a week from tonight, will be in Calgary to finish off February on the 29th day of February. All right, so the Seals have scored nine straight, Doug, not ten straight. And we should point out, too, John, Vancouver with a tough game, too, as they're hosting Georgia a week from tonight. All right, so the next two matchups for these two teams. And again, a San Diego win today leapfrogs them past Vancouver in the West Division standings and also gives them the season series against the Warriors with one regular season game to play between these two teams. First game was really closely played. It went to overtime, in fact, when Brody Merrill won it. Low and fires. And Damude has been great. All San Diego since that slow start. And Vancouver has not scored since about 6.40 to play in the second quarter. That's been about 20 game minutes or a third of the total game since they last scored. San Diego winning all these face-offs. Casey Jackson's been great. Stotts in the second half has come to life. Penny has it. Whips it ahead now. 
for Matt Beers. Now Jones, who again entered the day leading the league in points, needs two more goals to finish the day leading the league in goals. McCready underneath gets by the defender, but couldn't beat Dan It's still loose. Almaro just ripped down. Rival, right? Real good battle there. Vancouver coming away with that important loose ball. Yeah, it looked like Rhino was completely wrapped up. All right, final three minutes of the third. Vancouver has not scored this half. San Diego, believe it or not, trailed 7-5 at the break, but they're on a 6-0 run here. As they mute, makes another stop. Kind of a dangerous time right now for the Warriors. Already trailing by four on the road. I don't think they can afford to fall behind by more than this. Jackson working his way inside with that bounding shot. Made up by the Warriors, but deflected away to San Diego. Wow. It feels like San Diego's possessed the ball, Doug, for the entire third quarter. Well, they're winning, as you said, most of the most of the draws. They're winning. They're winning possessions after after their goals. Yeah. They've scored nine in a row. And the loose balls. And there's the tenth consecutive goal for San Diego for Berg. It was Berg who thought he had the twelfth goal. It was waved off because of that crease violation. Now he's got goal number 12 for the Seals. And Berg gets a great little pick, steps around it, and blasts it far side by Eric Penny. And there's your 10th goal. Yep. 10 in a row. O'Doherty just couldn't get up there in time. Great little seal by Zach Greer. Freeze Berg. They're working everyone through the faceoff circle right now. Because Clell has been near perfect, and he is again. I mean, they're winning every single faceoff, which is just such a huge advantage. 12-7. We'll see if Vancouver. I mean, how can they find their way out of this rut right now? Ten consecutive goals for the Seals, who have taken complete control. Buchanan slings one in. That might have hit the iron, and now it's loose. Warriors, as they hurry ahead, don't necessarily have numbers. Well, maybe now they do. And they beat Damute finally to end the 10 goal run. Derek Lloyd, the lefty, the defender in transition, makes it 12 8. Yeah, Lloyd in transition, a little bit of a twister, beats, beats Damute, a little twister right under his leg pad to stop the, stop the 10 goal run. You talk about a needed goal. Good overhead look at just beating Damien. It took 22 minutes and one second between goals for Vancouver. So just the second, as you see from Lloyd this year. As Vancouver off the schneid in the second half, drawing to within four. Cleland has been a magician in the circle. And you wonder how that injury has impacted this game, right? The Snyder injury, Doug. Well, I, I, I think for sure it has. I mean, Bobby Snyder, one of the best face-off guys in the National Lacrosse League. Face-offs are 16-5 San Diego, better than 75%. Greer, backpedaling out of a double. Goes east-west, gets it back, and scores! That was beautiful. Zach Greer fired up, and you know why? I mean, the ball's moving really well right now. A lot of east-west movement, which you didn't see in the first quarter, and they're seeing success. They're seeing fruits of their labor. Right under the, right under the V by Zach Greer, and that's a big answer, John. You know, the opponent, opponent gets, gets a goal, get a little bit more life. You come back and answer. That's super important. All right, so for San Diego, by the way, Noble today, six assists. Greer, the goal at 13-24 of the third, and San Diego with 13 goals today. They have scored more than that just twice this season. The win in Vegas with 17, the win in New York with 15. 
And they win another faceoff, 17 out of 22. And can they hold for one? Not necessarily, but pretty close. So they will. They've scored eight third quarter goals. Stotts. Back for Fields. Now on the far side. Into the middle of the floor. Berg. Stone there by Penny. And that'll do it for an eventful third quarter for your Seals fan. It's all San Diego right now, but don't go anywhere. 13-8. You're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on VR Live and Fox 5 San Diego. Welcome back. The Seals lead 13-8, and I'm joined right now by Coach Greer. Coach, now, it's really hard, it feels like, to come back after you've let four shots on goal, but Day mute has been pretty rock solid. What can you say about that? Yeah, it's really impressive for a 21-year-old kid to, to have that kind of start, get pulled, and then get back in and have the composure and confidence to shut the door. Nick's been great for us all season, so we need to keep it up here for one more quarter. What can you say about the confidence of this team and how it's just changed even after the half? Yeah, I mean, we came out our backs are against the wall. This is a huge game. It's basically a playoff game. So we came out firing, and I mean, we got to keep it up. The O scored a bunch there, and D's starting to shut the door. Thanks, Coach. Doug John, back to you. All right, thanks, guys. So again, San Diego's taking control. They win another faceoff to start the fourth, and then get that loose ball right there. Stotts lost it, but Seals retained possession. Not often that you're going to trail a game by five and lead a game by five. 13 to 8. Here to start the fourth quarter. There's Buchanan. Finds Berg in front. And Berg kept out. So the Warriors are going to have to sh show us something on offense here in the second half as they've only scored once. There's Lowen. Have the two early goals for the Warriors, but nothing since. Back for Jones. They could really use Jones to get going. It's loose for Bradley. Here's Fields. Well, again, the Seals went down 7 2 in this one, but. Have scored 11 of the next 12 goals. I think I have that right. And they lead 13-8. And now we're going to whistle, and this will go back to Vancouver. Now look at this. Breakaway on the run out for Vancouver, but either Demute was there or the shot was wide from Tyson Rowe. They're stopped without numbers. Look at this. And now he slows it up. Got a good second half for Austin Stodds. All right, so Brody Merrill now has officially tied the NLL record for career loose balls. So we've received word of that. So tied up in terms of the career loose ball total. He needs one more to break the record. Just. Dan Mute gets a piece of it and keeps it out. Back and forth here in the fourth. So we got a lot to keep our eye on here today. Merrill trying to set that record. Seals trying to pick up win number four on the season. And leapfrog Vancouver in the standings. There's still a tunnel across in front of us here in 2020. Here's Buchanan. Dumping it inside for Berg with Penny in the right place at the right time. Doug. Great, great handle by Wesley Berg to even get that shot off. They're just kind of sitting on the edge of the crease out in front of the net. The offense is stalled for Vancouver on the road as Logan Schuss tries to get something going. Ball in front. Ball. Literally triple team. We got, got a delayed penalty coming up on San Diego. But Keegan Ball is so crafty to just kind of kind of get through two defenders to even get to the net. 
This will be the first time today Vancouver's gone to the power play. And a hold to Brody Merrill. Vancouver's power play at 54.3%. The San Diego penalty kill, 54.3%. Hmm. All right, we'll see if something gives here. This will be a big stop, obviously, for the Seals. There's only 11 minutes to play in this game. The lead is five. Of course, the Warriors really desperately need a goal here on the power play. It's one goal since the 640-something mark of the second quarter. In front, low and jarred loose. Picked up, though, by Jones. On debut, he smothers it. Well, a good start to the penalty kill. A little bit of everything here in the second half, right? I mean, good offense, great defense, good goalkeeping, great in the faceoff circle. Oh, it's been a good 45 minutes, I would say, yeah, for San Diego if you're, you. if you're a Seals fan. That's wide. Sling it in on Penny. All right, a minute to go here on the power play. Warriors, to some extent, it feels like they're a little bit out of gas, even playing a man up. See if they can respond, though, here. Jones. Damu, the low save. Stays, though, with McBride. Back for Jones. Jones in on Damu. And then scooped out of bounds by the Warriors' low end. And we get a stoppage on the floor. 13-8, to 8, San Diego leading. You're watching the National Lacrosse League. Game of the week on BR Live at Fox 5 San Diego. All right, gear off at the Seals brand new team store located at Hazard Center in Mission Valley. And don't forget, the season ticket members always save 15% on everything in store. Visit SealsLAX.com for more information. Hit hard, party hard, dive in. John Schaefer, Doug Locker with you from Pachanga Arena here in San Diego, California, where the Seals are leading the Warriors 13 to 8. All right, so out of the media timeout, Seals just whip this forward in the waning seconds now of this power play, and they're able to keep it really well done there. How'd they do that, Doug? Oh, they had, they had Buchanan doubled down at the far end. He just kind of threw one up for grabs, and they battled for the loose ball. Which means they've killed off this power play. As Buchanan throws that towards the net. Teams are full strength. And they'll get the re they'll get the reset here. Bernie Merrill out of the box again. A loose ball away from the career record in NLL history. But first, another goal from Buchanan. 14-8. And we'll get a good look at it here. Buchanan really just gets to the middle of the floor. Little, little jab step, gets to the middle of the floor, shoots it through a sea of Vancouver defenders. And one of the things we said earlier today, John, is that Buchanan had only had one multi-goal game so far this season. Now we're at two, and hopefully the sign of bigger and better things to come if you're a Seals fan. In this sport, you never know, but I mean, the Seals could not be more pleased than to have this six goal lead with 8.45 to play. And now, Jones and Gobrecht going at it. Wow. Oh, Jones lands one there, and maybe another. And now Jones ripped to the floor. And wow. Mitch, Mitch Jones, a tough kid, right? I mean, he played hockey at Northern Michigan. Uh, he can't be happy with what's going on right now. Decided to take a little bit of leadership and try to change a little momentum. Fire up his squad. I think Jones may have landed 
at least one as he's looking at his right hand. It's been that kind of day for the Warriors after a fast start. We said really all afternoon that it was physical. Here's another look. Oh yeah, he landed that one clean. Before being muscled to the ground there. Ooh. And Eli, Eli Gobrek got the uh, worst of that. He's heading off to the dressing room. Well, the crowd loves it. All right, Seals are playing with all the momentum. Let's see if this changes anything or not. Yeah, I don't, his whistle went before mine. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Right here. Five? Yep. Five on five face-offs right here. Five on five. So both guys will go for five, John. We'll be five. Yeah, we'll be five on five with a face-off. Chris Gill, Patrick Merrill looking on the head coaches for these two franchises. Well, like you said, I mean, maybe done by uh, Vancouver is a way to take some of the momentum back, but it might be much too little, much too late. 14-8 San Diego midway through this fourth quarter. And the Seals are on a 12-1 run since they went behind 7-2. I just think from a Vancouver perspective, it's unfortunate the guy that you're now you're going to lose for five minutes Good is Mitch point. Jones. Yeah, your best player. So no Gobrecht, no Jones for the next five minutes due to fighting that dive attempt over the net. Denied. For Casey Jackson, who's got five goals tonight for San Diego. Austin Stott's a couple of second half goals. The Warriors really with nothing on offense. Schuss hits the crossbar. Warriors with another opportunity. Then Merrill out there looking for that next loose ball to set the all-time record in the NLL. A wide open in front again, a post. And there it, there it is. is for Brody Merrill. The loose ball record in the NLL, 2,518 career for Brody. What a career it has been for the captain. Unbelievable. With that loose ball, passing Jimmy Veltman for the all-time lead in loose balls. And again, the third player in National Lacrosse League history to be in that 2000 loose ball club. What an accomplishment for Brody Merrill. Doug, he's closer now to 3,000 career than 2,000 at past 2,500. Great accomplishment. Congratulations to Brody. Again, his brother Patrick looking on from that box. And, 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 what, a, and what a career, too. Like three time transition player of the year, defensive player of the year, rookie of the year, eight time all pro. But he's done everything. Obviously, a future Hall of Famer. It's just. What a thrill to see that happen. All right, so the Seals and Merrill have that. They also have themselves a six-goal lead on their way to the fourth win, hopefully. This is flipped in front for Buchanan, who goes behind the back with Penny in the right spot again. New shot clock as the Seals collect. They have completely closed the seal on Vancouver's offense in this game. And such an important game, John, right. as we've talked about. Yep. Yeah, it really is. And when they went down 7-2, you're wondering, well, are they going to find a way to get back in this game? And not only did they find a way, they've really completely dominated this game since the first. Fields in on Penny, who's able to make that stop. All right, so 6-11 to play. Yeah, Brody Merrill with the record. Let's get Paul Rabel in here. Who's, special uh, special guest. By San Diego. We saw him last year. The great Paul Rabel joining us here in the booth. Get situated over here, Paul. Good to have you with us again. Brody is a legend. Yeah, I mean, put this record in perspective. I mean, the loose ball record in this league. I mean, it, what, what an accomplishment, right? Yeah, it means you're everywhere and you dominate the game start to finish. It's pr pretty simple because different than field across, the ball stays in play because of the boards. <laughs> right. So that's why Brody's so great. It translated to the field game, too, because he was always on the hunt 
where a lot of field-based players know when a shot goes, it's either in the net, it's saved, or it's out of bounds. Mm. So he's always hunting. That's what makes him so great. And he's literally done everything right in his career. I mean, the all pros, the transitional player, the loose ball record. I mean, what has he not been able to accomplish in this league? He's accomplished everything. I mean, that's why I'm here. I, I drove down through four hours of traffic from L.A. just to watch him pick up that ground ball that we saw here. And uh, the impacts he's had on the game, you can't put it into words. Brody has... You know, as a 38 year old out here still dominating so from peer to peer longevity his athleticism his care for the game his leadership his skill indoor and outdoor internationally what he's done for canada lacrosse what he's done for us in the u.s austin Stotts, by the way is down behind this play yeah this has been a build-up over the last quarter and a half between yep. him and o'doherty this game's been really physical, obviously, as you just saw with that fight. And now Stotts, who is kind of working out that right leg, of course, coming off an ACL. And this is another thing where Brody has led in both leagues his leadership. He's, he's tough. He'll get out there and fight on behalf of Stotts. Yep. And so he's a player. I've played with him, played against him under his leadership. And uh, I remember being in locker rooms with him back in Philadelphia in the indoor game and him bringing us all in and essentially saying, hey, let's look out for our skill players and look me in the eye, skill guys. If someone comes and messes with you, I've got your back. I'll be there. So don't worry about it. Just focus on your job. Let me play cleanup. All right, so Paul Rabel joining us here in the booth from San Diego. Brody Merrill has the loose ball career record in the NLL, 2,518 as Vancouver finally gets something going on offense from Lowen, who's got a hat trick. A tale of two games. I'm not sure when you showed up, but it was 7-2 at one point, and San Diego now is obviously taking control. Yeah, I got here for the good stuff. I saw, the, <laughs> saw them make a run in the second half. And, and let me just say this. Yeah. You know, Doug Locker's a lot better at doing this than me, so I'll get out of your guys' hair. There's under five minutes, important part of the game coming up, but I'm just happy I could come on the broadcast and pay respect to the legend here. So love you, Brody. No, we appreciate you doing that, Paul. Great to see you. Thank you for swinging by. Thank you. All right, so... Uh, you talk about the respect that players have for other lacrosse players, Doug, and Doug's getting back on headset, but you, you talk about, Doug, what I was just saying, the respect that lacrosse players have for other lacrosse players, and Paul Rabel driving down from Los Angeles, he said through traffic, it took him four hours to get here. He wanted to be here because Brody, he knew Brody Merrill was going to set that record today. Yeah, it's the ultimate sign of respect. Pretty, pretty special. Right, we'll talk about it on the other side. It's all San Diego right now. You're watching the NLL Game of the Week on BR Live at Fox 5 San Diego. Ladies and gentlemen, just before the timeout, Captain Brody Merrill made lacrosse history. With his last loose ball, Brody has now collected 2,518 loose balls in his illustrious career, passing Jim Veltman and making him the all-time leader in NLL history. Pretty cool moment for Brody Merrill, the captain hey Brody, it's of Jim the Bellman. Seals. I just wanted to congratulate you on attaining the National Lacrosse League loose ball record. I can relate to all the effort and the bumps and bruises that it takes to reach that kind of milestone. So congratulations. It couldn't have happened to a better person in the best league in the world. Congrats again. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Brody Merrill! 2,518 career loose balls for the captain. Just amazing accomplishment by Brody Merrill. And I think in Jim Velvin's video, you heard him talk about mm -hmm. how much it takes to do that day in and day out over the course of a career. And every player knows how absolutely critical that is to the success of a team. And Brody really personifies that. Uh, well, I love how you put it in perspective, too, with three players in the history of the league at 2,000 or above, only three players, and he's well above 2,000. I mean, it's just remarkable what he's been able to do. Yeah, and you, you got Brody now at the top, Jimmy Veltman at 25-17, you know, obviously a legend. John Tavares, another living legend at 21-91, now the head coach of the Buffalo Bandits. Jeff Snyder, all-time greatest face-off guy in league history in the four spot, and Mark Stainhouse, 
played most of his, well, his entire career with the Buffalo Bandits. Most of his career with the Buffalo Bandits at 1641. How tough is it going to be for someone moving forward to pass this number? Well, I mean, the, great, the, great, the, great, the great thing for Seals fans is Brody's not done. Right, exactly. The clock's still running. Exactly. That number's only going to go up. Oh, here we go on the break in front, but a denial made there on the shot from McIntosh. Under four to play. I didn't expect this, the way this game started. I didn't, not to say that San Diego wasn't going to win, but I thought if they did, it would be closely played in the second half, and it hasn't been. Well, and I, I think since since Stotts has come back, I mean, we started to see a little bit of it. You know, the offense has played with a little more jam, a little more jump in their step. Guys are getting open. Uh, seems to be a lot more confidence, and he, he obviously brings that out in guys. And by the way, Stotts, remember, was kind of uh, walking off gingerly a few moments ago. He was back on the floor right there, which is a great sign for San Diego. He's wearing, of course, that brace on the ACL knee. And off the bench, McCready strikes. It's not over as not, it's 14-10. Yeah, not by a long shot. And Joel McCready coming off the bench gets a nice feed from Owen Barker to really bring this thing to a four-goal game with three minutes left. Now, what has been critical for San Diego, specifically in the second half, is winning these faceoffs. So you can shorten this game by shortening the number of possessions Vancouver will get. Again, from the Warriors' perspective, they need to win some faceoffs. Cleland's over 75% today. So two straight for the Warriors. All right, let's get to the uh, play of the game. All right, let's get to the play of the game presented by Geico. And uh, no surprise, Doug, Brody Merrill right here scooping this up. The record in his stick. Again, I, I, such an impressive, such an impressive uh, accomplishment. It's just hard to put into words. Right. And you kind of see it by the respect of, of guys that are in the building. I and mean, Paul Rabel driving down from yeah. Los Angeles to see this because he wanted to be here. Jimmy Beltman taking the time to submit, you know, a video tribute, which is extremely classy by an extremely classy guy. All right, here's Buchanan in front wide of Penny. But again, the Seals, look at this, with the winning the faceoff again off the goal, taking 40 seconds off this clock, essentially. Warriors ball, and they're going to go without Penny here. Six on five, Doug. Yeah, they've got to go, and they've got to go fast. They obviously know it. Trailing by four, needing to go on this possession. Demuth keeps it out, and then Rowan tonight at the doorstep. Well, Jones, Jones with a with a good opportunity. Lowen with a great follow-up, and Demuth with just two big, big saves. And now the Seals, I think, made the right decision. As opposed to fire at the net, Doug, you can work on this clock. Absolutely. Take take it down as low as you can take it. You don't need any more goals no. to win this game. Just need to kill the final two minutes is what you need to do. Penny with the stop. So again, Penny's going to be back and forth. He's getting in a workout right now. Coming up on NLL Post Game Live, highlights and analysis of tonight's game. And a look around the league as well. That's all coming up next. San Diego, 90 seconds away from this critical win. This is going to be easy. The FT Miller. Oliver Bolsterly with the goal in transition for San Diego. The rookie gets his first NLL goal at home at Pechanga Arena. Are they all going to be this easy? What a thrill for uh, Ali when that transition goal and the assist coming from none other than Brody Merrill. That'll be that'll be something to remember for a long time. Icing on the cake for San Diego. The Seals are going to move to four and six on the season. Vancouver's going to fall to four and seven. So San Diego's going to move into fourth place in the West Division of the NLL, still with about a half a season to play. And Austin Stotts is back. Casey Jackson, a big day today. Cleland has been brilliant in the center circle. And the Seals win another. Final minute.
Who's your who's your biggest star today for San Diego? Well, I think I mean Casey Jackson's hard to overlook with, with that big five. with that big performance. Yep. This is Fields. Oh, hit hard up against the boards as the shot clock unwinds, and then he's thrown down. This game has been physical, wire to wire. San Diego's going to win it. Well, I think I think one of the most important things of today's win, other yes. than the win, is is getting that tiebreaker. Yeah, winning the season series. Winning right? the season series is is going to be big. huge. Final seconds winding off. The Seals' fourth victory of the season with Austin Stotts back. Casey Jackson, the five goals. Nick DeMuir, really good in net after getting pulled early. And the Seals win it 15 to 10. Somehow showed this game 7 2. Then completely dominate and win it again, going away by a final score of 15 to 10. We will come back and wrap things up from San Diego as the Seals again win it. 15 to 10, you're watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week on VR Live and Fox 5 San Diego. Welcome back. The Seals win it at home 15-10 over the Vancouver Warriors, and I am with Casey Jackson. Now, Casey, you really led the momentum in the second quarter with three goals. You got five tonight. How do you feel right now, and, and, and what was it like to be a leader on the field tonight? Oh, it feels great. I mean, this is my old team, so it was kind of nice to get a little win against them and a little revenge, I guess you can say. And what was it like to kind of see the rest of the team build up behind you and just keep scoring after the second half? I mean, it's unbelievable. Those guys get so excited after you score, so it's kind of nice, uh, especially when you score in this building. It gets so loud, and I mean, I almost black out a little bit. And what was it like to see Damu come back in? I know that he got scored on four times in the first quarter. He came back, and he was rock solid. What was it like to see that from your teammate? I mean, we got so much confidence in Nicky. He's, uh, even last game when he came in, he only let in one, so uh, every time he's back there, we know we have a chance, and I mean, he just did what Nicky does. Thank you, Casey. And speaking of Damu, Nick, come over here. How do you come back from that? I mean, I know the first quarter wasn't easy, but you did come back and you were rock solid. What changed in your mentality in your game? I mean, it wasn't really anything with me. The team came out in the second half and I mean, you saw the O, they put up six or seven there in the first, in the third quarter. So really just a great team effort. And what can you say about the defense that this team had here tonight? I mean, they're letting me see shots. They're stopping shots when I need them to, getting big stops. I mean, just can't say more about how great the D played. Congratulations. All right, John, uh, Doug, back to you. All right, Tabitha, thank you so much. And again, San Diego takes down Vancouver this afternoon by a score of 15 to 10 on a day that will be remembered for a long time. Brody Merrill setting the career loose balls record in the NLL. And Doug, they do it by uh, really taking control in the second half in the yeah, second quarter. Did it, did it really in convincing fashion in the second half, uh, really building on that momentum, that three goal run at the end of the second quarter. And, and really dominated in a lot of categories. Dominated the loose ball battle, dominated in the faceoff X, uh, outshot them, and obviously outscored them. All right, let's get to the highlights again. San Diego in this one fell behind early. Initially, it was Riley Lowen that scored the first goal of the night for the Warriors. And this would lead to an eventual 4-0 lead. But there was a critical injury early on for the Warriors as well after this goal. Right. Uh, Vancouver loses Bobby Snyder on kind of a kind of a fluky play where one of their players got pushed into him, bumped into his knee. He had to leave the game, didn't return the rest of the night, and that gave free reign pretty much to Brandon Clellan. It did. So Mitch Jones made it 4 nothing though, and for a while it looked like the Warriors were going to have a lot of success on the road this afternoon in San Diego, but the Seals stormed back beginning with Casey Jackson. Yeah, Casey Jackson was just an absolute force all game long. We talked about it earlier. His five goals really propelled San Diego to this huge victory. Yeah, he had three of those goals in the first half, two more of them in the third quarter. San Diego taking the lead 
in the third quarter, and then they would never relinquish the lead. In fact, they would score 10 consecutive goals in this game. And Nick DeMute, who was pulled early, came back in, and he was great late for San Diego. Yeah, what a what a resilient effort by the kid. I mean, it, to get pulled is not an easy thing, but then to come back and really pull yourself together. 3-0 with Nick DeMute as the starter. All right, once again, the final 15 10 San Diego. You can visit NLL.com for all access pass to the National Cross League. You can get the latest news, highlights, stories, and more for Doug Locker and Tabitha Lipkin. I'm John Schaefer. You've been watching the National Lacrosse League Game of the Week you on Fox 5 San Diego and VR Live. of the National Lacrosse League.